Okay, so we got this Wander Lodge stopped back by. If you, we had this one in about six months ago. We did a full, well, six months ago, we finished the engine rebuild on it. Uh, he just went to another shop because his transmission was leaking. Uh, paid a lot of money to have his transmission pulled out and have the, the input shaft seal on the transmission replaced. Um, and then he's coming back by us because he's got an oil leak on the back side of the engine that we're going to take a look at. This oil leak here is past the engine. It's over the bell housing coming down, so it's almost over the transmission. So not really sure what that is. This hose is extremely hard to get to. You, you couldn't even really see it. Everything was done by feel. Um, but when they had the transmission out, they must have knocked it. Because if you look at the end of this here, that's like totally straight on there. You can, you can jiggle the cap a little bit, but it's, it's straight on the fitting. This is the end where it was leaking. I get you a good video for this or not. Um, but see how it's crooked on there? It must have got knocked. And it must have a crack under there because that's where it was leaking from. But it was a heck to get off. So these are reusable air equip. We stocked the air equip hose in stock. I had another hose with two good fittings on it. I just took it off and then we put a new, new piece of hose in between it. really stinks is he's still got transmission fluid coming out of the bottom of the bell housing too and that's the oil leak he just had fixed okay let's play guess what this is what do you think you're looking at here hmm interesting huh is that a cavern see if they can identify <laughs> what it was before they yeah, this thing still had voltage. It was still working. Um, the exhaust melted a hole through it. It, uh, yeah, it kind of tried to release some of its negative energy there, I think. He was missing a piece to his exhaust, so we're, we're fabbing up uh, some brackets in there and completing this exhaust here, um, making it fit right so it can get secured and not have that happen again. Uh, but a piece of his exhaust had, another shop had worked on something and didn't put it back together right or something, but it had fallen off. Uh, before it got to us. We were hoping he could find the original piece from another bus and just get it you know, swapped into there. But So we're just going to go ahead and fab something up here for him just so that it can be safely secured and he'll have a tailpipe that points out the side of his bus now. Got it all fabbed up and in there, and there's a little corner that's rubbing on there, so we gotta just shape it a little bit to make room for a, like a, there's a, a box, a sharp angle inside the bus that, a metal that needs to get out of the way. I mean, he definitely moved it three quarters of an inch, it looks like. You want to run under the sink? <laughs> so this got real scary. So he just finished welding on that exhaust here. And maybe 15 minutes before he welded there, I was cleaning something on that workbench with some brake clean. And maybe some brake clean went back behind it. And there was apparently some, well, not apparently, there was uh, some shop towels back on the ground behind that workbench that you can't see. 
So he's walking away here. Now remember, he, the welding was done before this clip even started here, so it's been a couple of minutes. Nothing, nothing at all to worry about. He was going to clean something up or cool a part off or something. I think he was making a bracket, so he was cooling it off in the water at the, at the sink there. It's, it's amazing how much time this takes. If you don't know what's getting ready to happen, um, you'll find out here in a second. <laughs> This is uh, kind of a scary situation. So here's my wife coming into the shop and Jonathan's daughter, my granddaughter, is on the phone and wants to FaceTime with him. She was out of town for Halloween visiting great-grandparents. So here he's FaceTiming with my wife and his daughter. On the, they're FaceTiming with my granddaughter. And if you look behind him on the wall, you'll start to see some smoke coming up the wall. I mean, very easily could have just walked away, you know, left the shop and thought nothing, nothing serious had happened and you wouldn't have to worry about a fire starting. But the rags have smoldered and caught fire behind the toolbox. Watch that reel, that ho that red hose reel, and you'll start to see the smoke coming up around it. So they're, again, they're FaceTiming with somebody, so it's in the background, but you start to see the smoke coming up. You see it up there, just little puffs of it. They haven't noticed it yet. They start smelling something. Jonathan turns around, then he sees the smoke, looks back here, sees the flames. Oh my gosh. He runs over to grab where he knows there's a fire extinguisher at because he <laughs> was welding earlier on the other side of the shop and left it next to the welder on the other side. Um, he ran by three fire extinguishers to go get that one. Um, comes back with a fire extinguisher and puts out the fire. The toolbox has the wheels locked on it, so they, they were trying to pull it away from the wall, but they couldn't pull it away because the wheels are locked on it. They're very, very heavy when they're full of tools. So that was a close call. Um, very easily we could have walked away. So we're not going to weld over there anymore. Um, here comes Rob. He, his bus is in the shop, and he's this very stinky, stinky odor in the shop. And he's having trouble breathing because of it, so he ends up leaving the shop. So they're, the fire's out. They're going to pull the toolbox away here. Yeah, I have fire extinguishers mounted on the wall and at the floor of each exit. So there's one, there's two big ones in the background that you can't really see there by the door to the apartment. And then there's two underneath of the camera. And then there's also fire blankets. And then there's other fire extinguishers toward the other doors on the outside of the shop too. I think we got like six of them total in the shop. So that Rob's kind of having a hard time breathing. Crazy, crazy. Uh, we're definitely gonna have a fire safety meeting. So those were the top of the shop rags and stuff were burning. So we do have that fireproof paint on our insulation so the insulation didn't catch on fire, but uh, it, the towels were burning down there and it could have been really bad. Yeah, climbing up a grade like this, you should see closer to that 20. flirting with it. So we'd reported that the turbo had a lot of play in it and uh, when we worked on the engine earlier this year. Uh, so we're gonna, we're just taking it for a test drive to make sure there's no oil leaks now and then going over, uh, seeing how much boost we can get out of the turbo. We should be seeing 20 PS, PSI boost and the max we're seeing is like 16.
left my cord up top, so I'm gonna have to get it. Oh, that's fine. You'll be more level tonight if you park at the top of the hill than where you were at last night. This guy doesn't know what the speed limit is <laughs> uh, <yeah>. at all. <laughs> shot as good as mine. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw him hit that bump and keep bouncing, I was like, holy cow. How fast are we going? Feels like we're doing like 30. <laughs> How fast are we going? We're going 30. Jesus. Compressor fins have been touching, scraping the housing there because the bearings are bad. And you can see the marks on here too. Spin the blade real slow for me. Yeah, I can definitely see where this one. Rubbing. So here's the new turbo. It took a couple days to get in. On the pit. 
It's got plenty of room over here. going good for him. Uh, he stopped at a rest stop, headed back to Texas and checked for oil leaks again. No, no oil leaks. And then he stopped at Memphis and he had transmission fluid and an oil leak on the driver's side near where the engine and transmission meet um, on the rear side of the engine, which would be far away from you there. And uh, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, he, he looked at it. I said, just monitor your oil or if you want to leave it, Memphis we will come look at the oil leak, but it wasn't severe enough. He had oil with him. Um, and so he hit the road again, got about halfway back to Texas. Then all of a sudden he sends me this text that he's been, I told him, you know, monitor the gauges like a hawk. I, I teach my clients, you know, every mile marker that you see, you're checking your gauges, temperature, oil pressure, um, air pressure. And all of a sudden his gauge just shot way up instantly. Um, and he pulled over, the engine was still running. That's a good sign when he pulled over. Um, but the temperature got really, really, really hot. And, uh, so he's getting a tow truck. Uh, to pick it up and they're gonna bring it back. You know, a few, a few things like what can make it get really hot fast like that? You know, maybe it lost a radiator hose and dumped all its coolant, but he said there's no signs of any coolant leaking anywhere. Uh, maybe the water pump went out, something happened with the oil cooler, um, you know, I don't, uh, the radiator fan, something like that. So it's, who knows what it could be. Um, we'll, we'll get it here and take a look at it, but uh, some, something definitely failed in the cooling system. So the tow truck pulled in here with the bus right around midnight, a little after midnight uh, on what would be Saturday morning. Uh, so definitely made for a, a late, late night.
Well, I went down and looked at it Saturday morning. There's no coolant detected in the oil. The oil is plenty of oil in the engine, so that's a good sign. Uh, he said the engine turned over. It was it was turning over, so the batteries were low. He didn't start it, um, but it's not seized up because he, he said it turned, so that's another good sign. So I can't see any oil in the hydraulic system for the fan. Well, I can look down in there and not see any oil, and I can stick the zip tie down in there all the way that far, and there's no oil in it. So that's, in fact, that radiator fan. I don't feel any resistance on the pump motor back there. Usually the fluid in the pump, you can kind of feel it when you do it. So I think maybe that loss of hydraulic fluid Well, he was delayed a couple of days of getting to us because when he had the transmission work done, when the shop took it on the test drive, he sent me a message saying that it blew out a hydro or a line to the transmission and they had to have it towed back to that trans shop. Um, and then they fixed that, but it turns out it wasn't a transmission line. They had replaced a power steering line uh, that is all part of the same hydraulic system here. So that's all pointing to what we think is going on here. And then here's the real scary part when I asked him how hot did it get? And he said between 230 and 320 which you can't really take these things above like 210 without having an issue. There's no mark there to decipher between 230 and 320, so that's why he doesn't really know what it was at. But the fact that he was monitoring the gauges closely and pulled off when it was still running, that's a, that's a good sign. But I'm definitely very worried about what happened to the engine because of the overheat. Well, stay tuned for this. Uh, those of you wanting to see the dozer pull a bus up the hill, I think you're going to get a chance to see that this week.